Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Christmas Bird Count for Kids webinar. My name is Lindsay, and I'm a park interpreter in Birds Hill Provincial Park, standing on Treaty 1 territory, homeland of the Anishinaabe and the Métis Nation, whose peoples are deeply connected with the plants and the animals of this land. Tonight, I'm so glad you're joining me as we learn a little more about the Christmas Bird Camp for Kids and how you can participate in this citizen science program right from your own home. Now, the Christmas Bird Camp for Kids program is a citizen science program that is part of Bird Studies Canada, where it encourages children and their families to get involved by learning more about birds that we see in the wintertime in Manitoba and recording that information and passing it on to Bird Studies Canada so that scientists and researchers can learn more about our changing bird populations in the province. Now this is a fun program that you can do throughout the months of December and January. You can do this right from your own home, you can do it in your backyard, or even sitting in a, at a window in your house and looking outside to observe birds. You could also do this by taking a walk through your neighborhood, visiting a local park, or even coming out and visiting a provincial park. Now, as you observe birds, whether you see them or hear them, you can record that information on a registration sheet through Bird Studies Canada and submit that information to them on their online survey. Now, that information goes to help scientists and researchers know more about the bird populations in Canada. It also allows you to get involved by learning about these bird species and finding out ways to protect them. Now you might be asking yourself, how am I going to know all these different birds that I see in Manitoba? There's a lot of them. Here in Birdsell Park, we see over 200 different bird species. Now don't worry, I'm going to give you some quick tricks of the trade to become a great bird watcher in the wintertime. Now, a lot of the birds that we see in Manitoba have already migrated come this time of year. So a lot of the waterfowl and the shorebirds that we're familiar with seeing in the summer don't stay here for the winter months. A lot of times people think it's because it's too cold and they're not able to survive the cold temperatures, which is partially true. A lot of them are not very well adapted to our winter weathers, but it's also because of the habitat that they require. And so for a lot of these birds, they need open water to swim in for shelter from predators. They also need water to swim in to find the food that they eat. So different vegetation or aquatic insects. Now in the winter time in Manitoba, we know that our water freezes. And so these birds can't find the habitat that they need to survive. And so they migrate south to areas where the water doesn't freeze and they can find all the parts of their habitat that they need to survive. Now, for some of our little feathered friends that live in the forests or out on the prairies or in the wetlands, they require a different type of food, maybe flowers that produce nectar or seeds. And so for a lot of these types of birds, that's our little goldfinch that we see in Birdsell Park. They aren't able to survive here either in the wintertime because there's just not enough flowering plants for them to find the nectar or the seeds they need to survive. So they also have to migrate to warmer climates where they can find food to eat. So this leaves a lot fewer birds left in Manitoba over the winter time, which makes it a great time to get into bird watching because you don't need to worry about so many different species to learn all at once. So tonight we're gonna go over the top 10 bird species that you are most likely to see here in Manitoba in the winter time. So we're gonna switch it over to some photos so you can get a good look at these birds up close. All right, so after this webinar is finished, we will actually have a link available to you that will direct you to Bird Studies Canada's website with more information about the Christmas Bird Count for Kids program, where you can find the data record sheets and also how to submit that information to Bird Studies Canada. All right, so the first thing we need to learn when we're looking at birds is actually about their beaks. Now, a lot of birds have different shapes of beaks, and this is because they eat a variety of different types of foods. So you can see on the one side of the screen, there's different shapes and even different names for their beaks. 
So some birds have a cracker type of beak and that's because they eat a lot of different types of seeds and they need their beaks to be able to crack open those seeds. Other birds have more of a shredder type of beak. So that's our owls and our hawks and falcons and even eagles. We see some of those in Manitoba over the winter, but not as commonly. They have the type of beak that allows them to tear apart their food and sometimes even swallow it whole. Some of our birds have a chisel type of beak, such as our woodpeckers, and that allows them to burrow into the trees to find insects that are inside. And other types of birds have more of a spear type beak for finding food that is deep down inside of uh, flowers or other types of plants. So as I said, we're going to learn some of the top 10 birds that we see in Manitoba, and we're going to start with one of my favorites. That is the black. And you can hear its call. So this bird is called a black capped chickadee because it has black on the top of its head, like it's wearing a little black cap. And it makes a variety of different calls. The first one that we heard is actually the mating call. And it kind of sounds like a cheeseburger, cheeseburger. So that's a way to help you remember that call and associate it with that bird. The other call that it makes is just a singing type of call uh, when they sing to each other. And it says its name, chickadee dee dee dee, chickadee dee dee dee. So that's a very common bird species that we see throughout Manitoba year round. It's a very common one to see here in Birds Hill Park. Now the next bird is also very common to see here. It looks similar to a black capped chickadee because it has similar coloring, but it's a little bit different. So we'll go to that one. And this is called a white breasted nuthatch. So you can see it also And there's its call. So it also has black and white on its head and a lot of gray on its body. Uh, the call for this bird, I kind of think it sounds like a monkey sometimes, kind of making like a ooh, ooh, ah, ah kind of a noise. Uh, but the one big difference between this bird and the black capped chickadee is that black capped chickadees will often perch or they'll kind of sit on branches. Whereas the white breasted nuthatch likes to go head first down the trunk of a tree. So if you ever see a bird that looks similar to a chickadee, but it's going head first down a tree, it's most likely a nuthatch. And its beak is a little bit longer because it will also dig into the bark of trees to look for insects, as well as cracking open different seeds and nuts to eat those in the winter time. All right, our next bird is a very colorful one. This is our blue jay. And this is another very common bird to see throughout Manitoba. Uh, you may also see gray jays around parts of the province. They're not as common in uh, the Winnipeg or Birds Hill areas, uh, but they are closely related to blue jays, uh, just more of a gray color. And the sound a blue jay makes is uh, kind of a squawking sound. So we'll hear that now. And this is one that you may have heard if you're out for a walk in a forested area. Uh, I really like blue jays because they are bright and easy to find in the forest. Uh, and I find that birds that are really brightly colored are some of the more easy ones to identify. So those are always good ones to start out with as you're just learning how to identify different bird species. Now blue jays love to eat peanuts. So if you're wanting to attract them to your yard, that's a great snack to put out for them. All right, our next bird is one that uh, sometimes gets confused with house sparrows, which we'll see very shortly. This one is called a common red pole, and the males have that really pretty red on their forehead and a bright yellow beak. So that sets them apart a little bit from some other birds. And we do see these ones throughout the province in the winter time. So we're gonna listen to their call. It kind of makes a 
fun little ch -ch 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 kind of call, call. Maybe we can hear it again one more time. So that's a really pretty one to identify again with that little bit of red on its forehead. It makes it easy to spot and pick out amongst other birds. All right, our next one is the house sparrow. And this is one that's very common to see in a lot of urban communities. So whether you're in a city or uh, a really populated community area, uh, these ones are very common. They love to hang out near shrubs, uh, especially sh cedar bushes. Uh, so these are uh, a very common bird to see throughout the province and we'll hear their call now. So it kind of makes a very typical cheep, 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 cheep kind of noise that you've probably heard before and may not have realized which bird was making that sound. Now there's two photos on the screen for this species and that's because one is the male and one is the female. So usually males are the ones that are a little more brightly colored and the females are the ones that are a little more on uh, the duller colors side. And that's typically because of camouflage when the female is sitting on the nest on her eggs. She needs to be camouflaged from predators so that she's not as easily seen. And so here we have the male and the female. All right, we'll go to our next set of birds. And these are the pine grosbeaks. Again, male and female. The male is the bright red one. So he's really easy to pick out. The female has a lot duller of colors, but she does have that pretty yellow, kind of a golden yellow on the top of her head and the back of her body. And they make a couple different calls. So we'll hear those ones. So the first call we heard there, uh, to me, it always sounds like he's saying, pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird, uh, which I think sometimes we think of that as being the kind of sound that a budgie or a parakeet might make. Uh, but that's the call that the pine grosbeaks make. There are other types of grosbeaks that we see throughout the province, uh, but these are the most common ones that you might see, especially in southern Manitoba. All right. Oh, and there's the other call. Right? So birds will make different types of calls depending on if they're singing to each other if they're calling for a mate, uh, they might even make calls that is a distress call. So if there's a predator in the area or if they're being chased by a larger bird, they'll make different calls for that. All right, our next bird is one that I'm sure we're all quite familiar with. This is the American crow. And I bet you you've even heard the sound that this bird makes, but we'll listen to it now. I know a lot of people really dislike that call, especially if it's early in the morning. To me, that call reminds me of my childhood, uh, camping out in the white shell and hearing that bird calling at four, five, six o'clock in the morning and waking everybody up. Uh, so I actually enjoy the sound that that bird makes. And these are actually a very intelligent bird. Uh, despite what a lot of people think. So they are one that we see throughout the province uh, year round and especially in the winter time. They're often scavenging for different types of food. Uh, even carrion, which is dead animals that we might see along the roadway. They're a great scavenger for cleaning up on the sides of our highways. All right, our next bird is the black-billed magpie. And this is one that we see generally in the fall time and the early parts of the winter. Uh, so they do a short migration down to uh, parts of the United States, uh, but it is a very short migration. So they don't go very far and they usually go a lot later in the season uh, towards the end of January. And then they'll migrate back north in the springtime. So we'll hear what this bird sounds like.
And again, it's a very squawky kind of a call. Uh, with magpies, the male and the female will court each other. They'll stay together for actually several seasons. And so you often see them in pairs. And they also like to hang out along the sides of highways, scavenging for um, different bits of roadkill, uh, as well as garbage. They will actually eat just about anything. So if you see this bird, you're quite likely to see them in pairs. And they actually have really long, beautiful tail feathers. All right, our next bird is the downy woodpecker. So this is the smallest of the three woodpeckers that we see in Manitoba. And again, we have the male with the bright red on the back of his head and the female who doesn't have any red on her head at all. So they look very similar except for that red marking on the male. And they also make a variety of different calls. So we'll listen to them now. when I hear a downy woodpecker that it's laughing at me because that's the sound uh, that its call kind of reminds me of. It's like it's laughing at me out in the forest. Uh, and of course that last call was the sound of their beaks going into the trees as they're looking for insects uh, burrowed away for the winter time. Woodpeckers love dead trees. So if you actually see dead trees uh, out in maybe your community or out in a forested area, uh, that's a great place to look for woodpeckers or even for holes that they may have uh, burrowed into the tree looking for their food. All right, and I think we have one last bird species. This is our hairy woodpecker. So this is uh, the medium-sized woodpecker that we see in the province. The pileated or the red-headed woodpecker, as they're sometimes called, is the largest woodpecker species. We didn't include that one today because it's not as commonly seen uh, and we tend to see them more in the fall time than we do the winter. But our hairy woodpecker, again, very similar to the downy woodpecker. The male has the little bit of red feathers on the back of its head and the female does not. So we'll listen to their calls because they're a little bit different. So this one also uh, might be interpreted as sounding a little bit like a monkey or like it's kind of laughing at you. So they definitely make some interesting calls. All right. Now that you've learned how to identify some different birds in Manitoba, again, these are kind of the most common species that we tend to see throughout the province in the wintertime. There are many, many other ones. Uh, and one of the great resources that Bird Studies Canada has on their website is that you can put in a geographical location and a specific date and it will generate for you a list of the most common birds to be seen in that part of the province at that time of the year. So it's a really great way to discover what type of birds might be in your area at the time of year that you would like to go and conduct your Christmas Bird Camp for Kids study. Uh, so I would encourage you to visit their website and check out that resource and it's another great way just to learn different birds in the province. Now, other than conducting a Christmas bird count for kids program, there's lots of other things you can do to help out birds. And one of the easiest and probably most fun things to do is to make a bird feeder. So tonight I'd like to show you one of my favorite ways to make a bird feeder. So I'm going to just move these guys out of the way so I've got some space to work. And this type of bird feeder involves using pine cones. So you can use any type of pine cones. I found these ones in the park, they're kind of opened up and a good size, but you can use any type of pine cone that you might have in your neighborhood or at your house. Uh, if you don't have pine cones, something else you can use that I'm sure we all have at home are uh, toilet paper rolls. And so you can use those as the base. You can use uh, lard or shortening, whether it's vegetable based 
or a uh, animal base of shortening. Uh, and that fat is really good for birds. They really need that to help support them in the winter time. And then bird seed. So there's lots of different types of bird seed that you can buy. Uh, one caution with bird seed is that a lot of them do contain peanuts or nuts. And so if you have uh, allergy concerns in your family, you may want to check the ingredients on the package of bird seed before you buy it, just to see what's all contained in that bag of bird seed. Now to make this bird feeder, I'm gonna use a piece of string. And if I'm going to do my pine cone bird feeder, uh, what I'm gonna do is take that string and I'm just gonna kind of wind it around the uh, pine cone a little bit and you can even put on two of them if you'd like. You can make your string as long or as short as you want, but you're going to want to make sure to leave a little bit there to be able to hang it up. And then you can put that into your lard, kind of rub it in. I'll show you what to do with the toilet paper tube though before I get my hands all messy. So if you'd rather use a toilet paper tube or you don't have any pine cones to use, you can run that string through the middle and you may even want to tie off a little knot for yourself because after you put your hands into the lard, they're gonna be a little messy. So there I've got my knot tied for that one. For this one here, I'm just gonna leave it as that one long string. I might attach another string onto it afterwards to make it a little bit longer. So I've taken my uh, vegetable lard and I just kind of mashed it down with a knife just to make it a little smoother. And then all I'm gonna do is kind of rub my pine cones into that lard, try to get as much in there as possible into all those little nooks and crannies, fill it up. This is a great thing for children with small hands to get in there. They can get their little fingers into all those little nooks and crannies and fill it up with lard. And then if I'm gonna do a, pine, uh, a toilet paper one, you can do the same thing. You can rub that in, or you can also use a butter knife and smear it on with the butter knife. It makes it a little bit easier than just rubbing it on, and you can get a little bit of a, a more evenly thick coating across your toilet paper roll if you do it with a knife. So I've got that spread on, and then I'm going to take my bird seed and I'm just going to ro roll all that vegetable shortening into the bird seed. I'm going to use my hands just to kind of pack it on so that it doesn't immediately fall off. But you can see that one there. And then same thing with the pine cone. I'm just going to roll that into the bird seed. And again, I'm going to kind of use my fingers to pack it in. So this bird seed that I'm currently using uh, has a little bit of millet in it. That's a type of seed. It also has uh, some sunflower seeds and some black oil seeds. So those will really attract a lot of the seed eating birds, a lot of our nuthatches and chickadees. And so now I can hang that up in my window at home. Uh, one caution, if you're going to hang this up near a window so that you can observe the birds from within your house, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's about three to six feet away from the window just so that the bird isn't flying into the glass and getting hurt. So any bird feeder you want to have in a location uh, far enough away from a window that the bird won't be hitting it. One thing you can do to prevent birds from hitting windows is you can actually make decals or buy decals to put on your windows. Uh, at this time of year, with it being kind of the wintry Christmas season, you may even want to make snowflakes to hang up on your windows. Anything that creates a bit of a barrier that the bird can see so that it doesn't fly directly into the glass. Now, as I mentioned earlier, blue jays love peanuts. Uh, so if peanuts aren't an allergy concern for your family, you can even take a long string. You can tie peanuts around that string and you can hang that up uh, for the blue jays to eat. One other caution though is that peanuts will also attract other critters such as squirrels and chipmunks. And so you may want to hang your bird feeder in a location uh, where squirrels or chipmunks can't easily get at it. Or you can create barriers for those creatures uh, such as a pie plate 
or even the lid to a uh, four liter ice cream pail kind of hung over top of your bird feeder, something that will just prevent that critter from getting at the bird feeder. Now in the springtime, birds have all the food that they need to eat. And so it's really important that we remove any leftover bird feeders come the spring. Make sure you remove your toilet paper rolls and throw those away in the garbage. We don't want to leave those around, especially in a park setting. Uh, and you want to clean up any bird seed that is left on the ground because that may attract other critters such as raccoons and skunks and bears. So in the summertime, we really discourage feeding the birds. Uh, that's kind of more of a winter activity. So it's a great thing to do at this time of year, but in the springtime, we can clean that all up. Now, if you've enjoyed participating in a Christmas bird camp for kids program, there's other citizen science programs you can also participate in, such as the feeder watch program that takes place from January to March, or the great backyard bird count, which takes place in the spring. And you can find those all on Bird Studies Canada's website. So I hope you guys had lots of fun tonight learning how you can participate in these really great citizen science programs and how you're able to contribute to this important knowledge about birds in Manitoba, which helps our scientists and researchers know more about the changing populations in our province. So I want to thank you guys for attending this evening. If you have any questions, you can feel free to put them into the Q&A window now, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we have time for. Our first question is from Jennifer, who asks, can I put up a bird feeder in Birds Hill or any other provincial park? Yeah, that's a great question, Jennifer. Thanks for asking that. Uh, so in provincial parks, we really encourage people to practice leave no trace. Uh, so that means not leaving anything behind in the park that you might bring out with you. So taking everything back with you when you leave. Uh, bird feeders are one of those things that people really enjoy putting out. And so we don't encourage people to put out bird feeders. Uh, what we do encourage them to do is if you do put one out, we would really love to see you take that down uh, at the end of March, at the end of winter, and to clean up any bird seed that is left behind on the ground. And that will uh, prevent any other critters such as raccoons, skunks, or bears from getting into that bird feed. Uh, or being attracted to that area. Okay, uh, our next question is from Emily who asks, do birds eat the pine cones? Ah, so yeah, the birds may pick at the pine cone a little bit, although there's really not much substance uh, in this pine cone. Most of the seeds have already been released and fall into the ground. Uh, so they probably won't eat the pine cone really so much. Uh, other creatures such as squirrels and deer might nibble at it a little bit. Um, the nice thing about pine cones is that they are a part of nature. They're very natural. And so uh, if this gets left behind outside after the winter is done and falls to the ground, it's just a part of nature uh, and it's not as um, kind of polluting as something like a toilet paper roll is. Um, so the pine cones are really a nice option to use if you can use them. Okay, uh, this question is from Maria who asks, a robin left a nest on our pine tree. Should we take it down or leave it? Is there a chance that she will come back and use it next spring? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so some birds will come back and reuse the same nest year after year. Uh, even if they don't come back and reuse it, other birds may end up using it or may end up picking it apart and using some of the material from it to build their own nest. So if you have a bird, uh, a bird nest in your yard, I would encourage you just to leave it there um, because other birds may end up using it in the future. Okay. Uh, Emily asks, do squirrels chase away the birds? Uh, squirrels will sometimes chase away birds, especially around bird feeders. Uh, so that's why you may want to put up something to discourage the squirrels from getting close to that bird feeder. Uh, although squirrels are 
pretty amazing at getting at that bird seed. If they're hungry enough, they'll go for it. Uh, so they may chase away the birds and, uh, and that can be a challenge for birds to get at the food that we put out for them. Uh, Angela asks, are you able to use something else other than pine cones or toilet paper rolls for your bird feeder? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. Uh, so you've probably seen at stores, you can buy all kinds of different bird feeders. Uh, you can also make bird feeders out of recyclable materials. So that might be a nice way to reuse some of the materials you find in your home. Uh, so you may want to use something such as a milk jug or a milk carton. Uh, lots of different materials can be recycled and turned into a bird feeder. Those ones tend not to last as long. And so uh, I would encourage you if you make one and you use it for the season, you may only want to use it for that one winter season and then get rid of it and make a new one the following year. Um, another idea you can do is with the leftover shortening here, and I'll probably do that with this shortening here, um, you can take this as well as your leftover bird seed. You can mush it all together, almost like making a big batch of cookie dough. And then you can actually freeze that. So put it onto a cookie sheet in your freezer. Uh, you can tie a string around it or put the string right inside before you freeze it. And then that can go up, uh, be hung up on a tree or somewhere in your yard. And that basically makes uh, what's called a suet block. And suet is just the seeds mixed in with the lard uh, and the birds will eat at that all winter long. So by freezing it, it kind of just um, keeps it all together so that it doesn't fall apart. If I tried to put this lard with the bird seed out just as is, it would probably just kind of fall apart. So freezing it really helps. You can also buy suet block holders which kind of look like a little metal trap. Uh, and so you can put the suet block inside there. It then also gives the birds something to perch on. So something to grab onto with those metal rods and then they can eat the suet that's inside. Okay, the next question is, would we discourage birds from coming to our backyard if we keep on hanging out in our backyard? <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, birds will sometimes stay away from humans. It depends how uh, curious they are or how comfortable they are being around humans. Um, but as you spend more time in your backyard, birds and other animals will become more used to you and they will actually come into your backyard even when you're out there playing. So I know in my backyard at home, uh, we often see a lot of birds that are out in the backyard. When we first go outside, some of them will fly away. And then after a short period of time, because we've been out there for a while, the birds get used to us being there. They actually start to fly back into our backyard and they've become kind of used to us being there. And so they're not quite as scared of us anymore. Some birds will be a little more shy and they will fly off and you won't see them again. Uh, so it just depends on each species. Uh, that'll lead into our next question here, which is, will a bird pick at you? Ah, uh, so birds are, um, they're probably more scared of us than we really are of them. And so they're not likely to come right down towards you and pick at you. I know sometimes people like to try and take a bit of bird seed and hold it out in their hand and have the bird come down and land in their hand to eat it. Uh, as much fun as that seems, that's actually not a really good idea to do because it does teach the bird to be less scared of us, uh, what we call habituated. So they kind of develop a habit to not be as scared of humans and they may actually come closer to us. So we really don't want to be feeding the animals out of our hand. We also may have things on our hands in the summertime, uh, such as sunscreen or bug spray or maybe at this time of year, you may have just put on some hand sanitizer or some other type of lotion on your hand. And you really don't want the birds to be coming into contact with that um, because you don't know how that might affect them. So we don't really want to uh, encourage feeding birds out of our hands, but we don't really need to be too worried about birds coming and pecking at us. They'll probably stay 
uh, their, their distance away from us. Uh, how do birds eat the bird food if it's frozen? Uh, so their beaks are very sharp and they will peck at it just like they do pecking into uh, the bark of a tree to find insects. And so even if it is frozen, they'll still be able to pick at that. Uh, and because their beaks are so small, they are just eating small amounts. So whereas if we tried to take a big bite of it, we wouldn't be able to do that, but the birds will just be pecking at it and taking in small amounts. Do birds need a perch near the bird feeder? Uh, a perch near the bird feeder definitely helps uh, for the bird to be able to kind of land and be able to pick up their food. Uh, but a lot of birds can actually pick up their food while in flight. And so some of them will kind of hover in place and peck at their food and then fly away. Uh, others really do benefit from having a perch. And so that's where something like the suet cage uh, can be helpful or hanging your bird feeder in a tree where there's branches nearby where the bird can land on the branch and pick at this could be really helpful for them. Okay. And the uh, time here for one more question. Which birds hang out in groups? There are some that hang in our bush in the backyard in a group. Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, we usually see house sparrows hanging around together. They like to kind of congregate in a group. We often see chickadees together and chickadees will often sing and call out to each other. Uh, so those are the two kind of most common ones that I can think of. Uh, that you may see in a group. And especially if it's in your backyard or near your house, uh, house sparrows and chickadees are probably the ones that you're most likely seeing doing that. All right, well, I just wanna thank you all for attending the webinar tonight. I hope you had lots of fun enjoying uh, learning about birds. Uh, we just wanna remind you to visit, uh, when you're visiting parks, to follow all the COVID-19 public health orders. Uh, and we encourage you to only visit parks with members of your own household. Uh, if you do meet up with a friend, we encourage you to keep your group small, uh, less than five people, and practice the fundamentals of physical distancing and wearing a mask. So thank you guys all for joining today. Uh, be sure to sign up for other webinars and online events. The next one is our winter adaptations program uh, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Details and registration for this uh, in our, on our Manitoba Parks Facebook page and online at manitobaparks.com. So take care everyone, stay safe and stay home. Thanks, bye-bye.